Oh, and I'm excited because I get to hang out with my friend and resident Las Vegas legend, Miles Simmons from T- PFT. Miles, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm better now that I'm talking to my friend Eddie here. Oh, the synergy is, is off the charts right now. <laughs> but, you know, I obviously I love talking to you for a variety of reasons. In yes. the spirit of full transparency, I, me and you are chums. We are pals. We are. But I think that you in particular have a really unique kind of viewpoint into everything silver and black right in a different world for you in a different lifetime you covered us uh, for the esteemed rj now you have to see you're at pft but the biggest difference now i think is fair to say compared to when you were covering us to now is the raiders have questions at quarterback when you <laughs> when you my friend were covering us there were no questions about what was going on under center now we are in a completely different uh, position in a completely different place and i'm just curious from your viewpoint how would you kind of categorize everything the Raiders have now going on at that quarterback position? Well, it, it's really interesting. And, you know, you, you kind of try to read between the lines of what people say when they're at the combine. So being at the McDaniels press conference yesterday and listening to him, it sounds as if they would really like to draft and develop their own quarterback. And that's good in a lot of ways because it means that you are picking the guy that you want specifically, right? And, and, you know, when you inherit somebody like Derek Carr, who's been there for a while, who's had some success, it, it makes sense that you would want to see if that can work, right? But at the same time, you don't want to just completely hamstrung yourself when you are trying to get things done. It, it's just not what you want to do. And if you don't have a quarterback that you honestly and truly believe in, and you know, I don't think there's any reason to believe that McDaniels and Ziegler are not on the same page with this, then you need to move on. And I, I think that, you know, obviously the contract was structured in a way that they were able to do that after one year. Now you weren't able to get any draft compensation back. And you can probably say that's a good job by Derek Carr's agent to make them force the issue before the new league year even begins so that he gets that head start and he's able to meet with teams and, you know, teams are even able to talk about Derek Carr openly because he's that kind of street free agent. So it, it's a new starting point for the Raiders. It's a new starting point for Derek Carr elsewhere. And, you know, while there are veteran quarterbacks that are on the market, it just seems like from what McDaniels was saying, they would love to be able to draft and develop their own guy so that he's not just there for, you know, a year, a couple years, whatever it happens to be. But, you know, you're you're developing a solution that could potentially be for 10 plus years. You know, And I think you talk about reading between the lines. And I think that's what all of us try to do this week in, in, in Indy is kind of ear hustle a little bit. Try to put the pieces together. I heard this here and that here. What's going to stick? But but really for me and in he- in hearing Josh and Dave, one thing that stood out to me is, again, reading between the lines a commitment to not reaching for someone that they don't love. Yeah. And, and oftentimes I understand, and I completely can relate to the sentiment as a fan, but we got to get the guy. I don't care if we have to go up to two, if we have to go up to one. And, and it, feel like, it felt like Josh and Dave were very measured. Like we talked about them being aligned, very, me- me- excuse me, very measured in how they wanted to get their guy at, that, you know, at the right spot, if it is ultimately in the draft. Right. And, and you can't reach. You know, and sometimes you have to reach in certain situations. But I think what McDaniels and Ziegler have right now is security and kind of stability. I mean, Mark Davis talked about this over the course of the season. I believe in these two men and what it is that they are setting us on in terms of the course, the path, whatever you want to call it. Right. So if that's the case and you've got that total trust from ownership, then you don't have to reach. You don't have to say like, well, this is a guy that we really should take a chance on because if not, what happens? You know, if you don't really truly and honestly believe in the guy that you're going to pick as a high quarterback, you know, where that pick lands, unless they trade back or they trade up, whatever, right? Then you don't have to do it. You can continue to build and try to get what is a team that is maybe a quarterback away, right? And then you get that quarterback in a different place. You know, and I think what's really interesting too is just seven, being at seven, Mm -hmm. to me feels very intriguing. I keep saying it kind of feels like a choose your own adventure a little bit because, you know, as we sit here today, I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders moved up. I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders moved back. I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders stood exactly where they are at seven. Like seven is such a unique spot to be. And I think especially this year where we know that there's teams that have to go and get a quarterback, whether it is in the draft or it is, you know, through free agency, there is going to be action in that top 10. And so I think it'll be very, very interesting to see ultimately where the Raiders do end up picking. Yeah. You know, I used to work for the Rams and um, when I was covering them and 
we were talking to Les Snead before every draft, whatever, he would always be like, yeah, you know, there's a 33% chance we stay pat, 33% chance we pick, and then 33% chance we move back. And it's like, okay, maybe not. And especially, you know, when it's Les Snead, the odds are high that they're actually going to trade back. But in this case, like, I really feel like that is honestly true for the Raiders. That you what your point was there. I mean, it's just – there is going to be movement within that top 10, right? The Chicago Bears seem like they're not taking a quarterback. They've not unequivocally said that, but that seems to be what it is. So is it going to be the Texans that move up from one to two or two to one, I should say? It would then the Bears say, all right, well, we can move back again and we can get, you know, a quality player that we want with a high pick, whether it's seven, whether it's five or whatever. And then, you know, you move back again and you accumulate more picks. I mean, there's going to be action because of the Bears spot in their unique situation that they have Justin Fields already. You know, and, and I want to ask you to, to go deep dive on, on the, you know, all the quarterbacks. But when you look at it, it feels like there's kind of like a big three. And I'll include Anthony Richardson as like a three and a half. Sure. A yeah. guy with a lot of buzz, obviously, this week in Indy. But when you look at, at the Bryce Young, the C.J. Stroud, the Will Levises of the world, I mean, in a very general sense, what do you like about that group? And what maybe, if you were a general manager, gives you a little bit of pause about that group, too? You know, I, I like Bryce Young's decision making and the fact that we know he can go out and execute if things are right for him. And yeah, if things are easier for a quarterback at Alabama than they are going to be at, say, I don't know, Southern Miss. Mm. Let's just throw a random school out there. And I As don't you really know why. Southern Miss fan yeah, base, I yeah. apologize to you guys. But it, it's, it's different because of the way that Nick Saban recruits and the way that they've developed. And we we know that he had Bill O'Brien as an offensive coordinator. That obviously would translate if, you know, he's going to go to the silver and black because of the whole uh, offensive systems being essentially the same thing. So, I mean, there's a lot that you could like there. Um, but with, you know, C.J. Stroud, I, I like that I'm an Ohio kid, so I like that he went to Ohio State. I like that in the biggest game of his college career, he played at his best. You know, players always talk about this. You need to be at your best when your best is required, you know, and that is exactly what C.J. Stroud did. He put them in position to win that game, right? And, and if a kicker makes a kick, maybe we're not talking about Georgia as um, college football champions. So it, it's it's interesting to have that. I mean, with Levis, it's like you. there's a little more inconsistency. You love the big arm, but can you be as accurate as you need to be? And I think Anthony Richardson, the – it's almost the kind of issue that you get with a Trey Lance where he hasn't played as much football as a starter than some of these other guys. And also the consistency and the accuracy is not necessarily been there when you look at the numbers and completion percentage, but he's electric, man. But I mean, it, we use him run like the, most quarterbacks can't do that. And I think he also kind of like to your point, I think he benefits immensely. You're talking about Anthony Richardson of that kind of element of, intrigue of yeah. mystery a little bit because you've you've seen it but right. you haven't seen it for a long extended period of time and i think because of that it gets a little harder to maybe poke holes in the game and and but you're also like but you see like to your point what he could be yeah and, and there are coaches that say you know if a player does something and they put it on film and i see it then i should be able to coach him to do that consistently mm -hmm. and now different coaches have different philosophies on that but if you are somebody who feels that way and you're like, OK, how do I get this kind of thing from Anthony Richardson consistently? And I feel like I can do that. Then that's kind of what makes him intriguing. But that's not something that I think is going to happen overnight. I mean, most quarterbacks don't come in. I mean, in this class doesn't have this sort of can't miss Andrew Luck. You know, Trevor Lawrence was almost just like that. It, it, this class doesn't really have that. And I mean, you know, you're talking about Bryce Young, who would be the closest thing to it, I think. And you look at his body type and it's like, OK, well, he would be an exception because he's smaller, not just in height, but also in weight. And so that's something that you have to think about. Um, but again, there there are exceptions. Right. I mean, Aaron Donald went 13th overall behind number two overall pick Greg Robinson, who's no longer in the league. Right. And this is one of the greatest defensive players that this league has ever seen. But he fell that far because he's an exception. 
So it's about can you identify the right people who are the exceptions and make sure that they are put in the best positions to win? You know, and Kane Lee too, there's an element of luck that goes into Absolutely. all of this, right? Yeah. There's an element of getting lucky, uh, of hitting on the gamble uh, and, and having that pay off huge dividends. That's the goal anyways down the road. But Miles, it is will not, the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months will not be short on intrigue, on twists and turns. Certainly and not. I cannot wait to talk about it the entire way. Uh, at PFT, you are dominating. Mm -hmm. What do we have to look forward to in the coming days? Well, sir. Certainly, as always, you can find all the league headlines and everything that is going on in the NFL there at ProFootballTalk.com. And we've been talking to all kinds of coaches and GMs, and we'll have more interviews with players that are going to be coming through um, up on the website. You can also visit us on the NFL on NBC YouTube page. It's also where you can find the Peter King podcast, which I co-host with NFL writer Peter King, legend in his own right. Absolutely. So, yeah, I guess that's where you can find me. Make sure you find him. Miles Simmons, Vegas legend, RJ legend, friend of the program. He's the, he's the best. Uh, make sure you, you go and follow him. And Miles, thanks for hanging out with us, brother. Absolutely. At any time.